and welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And welcome back to the first culinary hotline, bling, bling, bling! <laughs> oh, for the new year, it feels so good to hear that. Oh, I'm so excited to kick off this year in the kitchen and with an amazing chef, Chef Max. Hello. Are you there? I'm going to call you Chef Max for the whole year. <laughs> Please call me Chef Max. Chef that Max, I love it. Dream name. You're in the kitchen with us this morning. We're talking back to office. It's real, it's reality. We're going back to the office. We got some amazing lunchbox treats this morning. You're going to be joining me because I want to, I want to talk. I want to okay. talk in the kitchen, and you're a great person to chat about everything food-related. But let's talk about the first dish we're making. Amazing. Well, it's ricotta-based, and it's a little tiny little quiche. I love quiche because it's super, super easy. And if you're kind of avoiding carbs, it's a great one. You yeah. can do it without the crust, with the crust. We're going to go without because I'm packing it full of vegetables. I was going to say, I also like the kind of mini versions because you can just grab a bite on the go. So much better than a slice of quiche yeah. that kind of messes everywhere. And it doesn't fit into your lunchbox like really well. Cute. Whereas a perfect cute. little round thing just goes bloop and it's there. And it's so simple to make. I usually make my own ricotta, which is so easy to make. Milk, lemon juice, leave it, and then it just splits. That's my ricotta. But it's also easy to go and buy it. So I know you might have had like a lot of cooking adventures this festive season where you tried new recipes. So I'm going to make it easy for you. Go and buy the ricotta. But we'll teach you how to make it soon. So simple. Eggs go in. How are you... Like your one hand egg crackers. You know, I've, I've had to do this on the show before. And one you hand. Do you want me to one hand it? Yeah, let's try it. But what if it. Okay, okay. <laughs> you got this. You got this. I feel like I'm still recovering from Christmas, so don't judge. And your technique was amazing as Thank well. You. Now watch me go on TV as well and mess it up. Okay. Crack, crack, and then just get a little separation. Miss, and miss, then... miss, miss. Oh, we did it. Okay. So essentially, what you're going to make is you. you're making an omelet basically, but you're going to bake it. And what happens when you bake it is they go a little puffy, a little fluffy, and then when they set, they're great for lunchboxes. Super simple, get your eggs in there. Salt, very important. Also keeping in mind, if you heavily seasoned your roast vegetables, go a little light yes. on your salt. And I'm using leftover roast vegetables because, I mean, my goodness, my fridge this festive season, most of it was leftovers from all the big roasts that we had. And this is a great way to actually just use leftover roast vegetables. I was going to say, you can even if you have leftover gammon or meat, it's literally just leftover city. And I think that quiches are such a fun way to just actually throw everything, cover with some egg, and you have a gourmet uh, little dish, little 100%. snack. 100%. What we also do is when we do cheese platters, and tell the truth, at home, you always <laughs> end up with a little bit of cheese left over of everything you've put yes. on the board. I take all of the cheese, waste not. And eat it. <laughs> and eat it. But then I also, I pop it into this recipe okay, and do yes. it like a four cheese little oh. tiny little baked thing. So super simple. Amazing. Can I ask you to give that a little scramble? Yes. And you can add your ricotta cheese to it. So what the ricotta does, it adds decadence and richness. It's not, it's not important for the recipe to work. I just feel like it really adds another level to the dish. So I get that ricotta in there. So if you don't have ricotta, could you just use a little bit of milk or cream? A little bit maybe? of milk, a little bit of cream. Mm -hmm. um, crumble in some feta, whatever you... Oh, yeah. Essentially, this recipe works really well at clearing out your fridge. <laughs> yes. And it just gives you an amazing lunchbox treat. And I mean, we did this as well during the festive season for breakfast because you don't want to be cooking every morning. So if these are done, totally. you can either reheat them or what I love, I like having a cold. Me yeah. Too. So, so they're kind of more solid. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a different eating experience. Absolutely. Let me ask you here, do you want more eggs? Are you happy with three? I like what you got going. Okay. So then we're gonna put some of the vegetables. And I don't even I don't even chop the vegetables up. I keep it whole, mm. nice and chunky. Mm. So get that in there. So talk to me about this new year. What foods are you looking to incorporate into your diet this year? What, do, what have you had enough of in 2023? <laughs> what am I leaving behind? What are you leaving behind? Sure, a lot of things. But what I am definitely including is definitely more seasonal vegetables, mm -hmm. actually sourcing them from local farmers, local farms, so that I can eat more seasonally and um, more sustainably as well. I like that idea. And I think we're also lucky living in South Africa that the farms are on our doorsteps. The ocean as well, you can go foraging, whatever you want. You can just go and like literally pick it. But pick responsibly. Don't be picking strange things and not knowing what it is and put it in your mouth. <laughs> also, you don't be, you know, picking some random berries from the park. I did that when I was younger and it actually made me sick. So friendly warning. <laughs> don't Google, be picking, don't, don't, be, be, <laughs> don't eat strange berries. Don't eat strange berries. Don't be picking strange mushrooms. <laughs> go go maybe, and maybe people should be picking strange mushrooms. Maxine <laughs> says you should go and pick strange mushrooms this year. I just I feel you. Okay, so Another thing, when it comes to eggs, I'm obsessed with eggs and pepper. Okay. Like, I'm so, so we're generous with pepper. We're very generously peppering these. A lot of pepper. Beautiful. Okay. And it bakes for like 20 minutes. I actually think I've got one that's done. Where's my... There we go. Let me go check on I it. grab it. These are great. 
Oh my gosh. Uh, almost, <laughs> almost. But you can see what happens. They yes. puff up, and you see the ricotta takes on its own shape. The yes. veggies, because you kept it whole, you can see it. Um, once it's cool, they just pop right out. I mean, it's, it's so simple, so easy. It makes an amazing breakfast, lunchbox filler. These are great, and I want to say, honestly, I think it ticks the wallet-friendly box as well, because I don't know about you, but I, ooh, this festive season was... So this one's great when it comes to a budget meal that just ticks all those boxes. And actually, I wanted to add, I think for 2024, I really want to be including slightly more protein in my diet because towards the end of 2023, I got a little bit lax. Mm -hmm. And this is so great as well because it's eggs. If you have added in any leftover meat, you got that as well. So they're actually a very balanced meal as well. I think snack. so too. I think so too, absolutely. You did tell me what you want to incorporate. Is there anything you kind of like over... Um, I'm going to be honest, like sodas, I don't even want to know how much Coke Zero or Sprite Zero I drank in 2023. I'm done with that. I'm a, a plain water girl. Plain water My girl. My affirmation is I love plain water. From the tap? <laughs> you know what, I'll take from the tap if that's all it's available. I know that you have a quite an expensive I've got water a, taste. I've got a water routine. So I love my, I love my water. So, yeah, so you're going to go... And, and I, I, feel, I feel you, so... Keep I it, want keep to try example. those waters, but I also don't want to rack up a water bill monthly that it could literally, what else could we be don't buying? Be telling, don't tell me people stuff from that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would feel, okay, water out the tap, I'm adding that to my list, water the tap, because I feel like it's so easy just to go to the fridge and, tss, and then, you know, pour. So, and I feel like that means keeping water chilled in the fridge at all times so it's always available. Totally. Drink more water and listen, yeah. to, listen to Chef Max. She knows what's up. Drink more water in 2024 and make <laughs> these. These are absolutely beautiful. Go and check out the recipe on EspressoShow.com. Max isn't going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. We'll be but back with I'm more. Here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hello, Max. Look Hello. at this. How are you? I'm great. How are Good. you? Good. I was smelling something delicious in the kitchen. Please try our quiches. Oh, look at that. So what, what is in here exactly? So we got some eggs, we got ricotta. Yeah. You could have used feta or other okay. cheeses. Mm -hmm. And we have yeah, leftover oh, it veggies. Looks good, eh? It looks good. I hate throwing away leftover veggies because I mean, look at what we can make. Listen, if I want a bit of a kick to it, I love a bit spicy. You know, especially for lunchbox, because I'm also looking for new ideas. Uh -huh. I, w I don't want to be boring when it comes to my lunchbox, because I really am boring when it comes to it. <laughs> I want to zhuzh it up. What can you do? Can you add some chili flakes in there? Totally. Some actually, actual I would, chili. I would add some chili, some chili flakes. Absolutely, hey? yeah. yeah. If you wanted to add another level of flavor to that, take the Willie's chili crisp and you scramble that yes. with the eggs when you beat it. You'll get the heat, plus that okay. soy will come through, every other flavor as well. That'll be good. Okay, mm. okay. Can I, can I open one of yes, these? Yes, it's guys? a picky bottom, but you know what? Go for it. I just want to see what it looks like. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And just like Clem said, we haven't cut oh, the veggies too the veggies. small, so you actually get a nice mouthful of veggies and not just a mushy... Look, I, yeah. know, it's, I know it's hot, but do you think yeah. I should try? Go for it. That's a quite a nice big bite and it's super hot. <laughs> do, are you going to... We'll fan it, we'll fan it, we'll fan it. I'm scared now. <laughs> oh, he's a champion. What's mm. that? Oh. I'm ruined. Oh. Yeah, okay, nice, nice. Is there nice. enough pepper? We peppered them a lot. That is amazing. No, the balance is perfect. Okay. Absolutely amazing. I love a good cheese. Uh, what is it? I love a good cheese. I love a good cheese and a good quiche. In a quiche, yes. Sorry, there's a. It's a. It's a culinary conundrum. You must be careful how you say <laughs> say that one. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, in my defence, it was really hot. It was very hot. I agree with you. And you did really, really well. Yeah. But essentially, the egg and the ricotta is your canvas, or the eggs your canvas, and what you add to it is just your unique little touch to it. Mm. It's delicious. It's easy. I love it. And once it's cool, it's perfect for a, for a lunchbox, like to pop it in and protein. You said protein. Protein. And the thing is. We don't eat enough protein. A lot of people don't eat enough protein. And the thing is, when I'm snacking, I want something that's actually going to fill me and keep me full for more than, like, five minutes. And if I go and grab something with no protein, I find them in, like, an hour I'm hungry again. Yeah. So two thing. of these, I think you'd be set for, like, two or three hours. I think for anything, if there's a goal for you out there, make it to, to add more protein to your diet. Protein Wholesome and protein. water. Protein and water. That must that be the best it. nutritional tip of 2024. And yeah. seasonal More eating. protein, not only meat protein, veggie protein, and water. We will now make sure we have a correct of water on set whenever we start the segment. You know what I've been loving? Tofu. I must add that in. So even yes. that would be great here if you are wanting yeah. to stay away from the meat. Um, tofu scrambles, tofu like in my air fryer. Loving. Nice. Well, nice. I'm going to grab this last piece and leave you guys to what you do best. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Stay tuned for more culinary hotline bling! <laughs> sad. 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 <laughs> it's my feel good. 
Welcome back to the kitchen for the next installment of the Culinary Hotline Bling! <laughs> better, better. So now, you've seen in the first part, we made these beautiful quiches, crustless quiches. You and tried them. We got the stamp of approval. Now we're moving on to a lunchbox treat, which I absolutely love. It's noodles with, again, kind of whatever you have in your fridge. And I absolutely love this recipe. And we're using jars. I feel like food that comes in a jar is automatically 50% better. I just wanted to say, this is so bougie, uh, taking some jar of, like, noodles. It looks like we might have got this from a restaurant in Cape Town who was doing little lunch packs. You know what? Maybe it might be a business venture for us in the new year. <laughs> Call us. Love okay. it. So talk to me about the ingredients. I've got some beautiful, fresh ingredients. Are you are you happy with like, happy. what you're seeing? I think I would actually like probably a little bit of, you know, some fine carrots. Mm -hmm. That would be really lovely because I think this is going kind of Asian, could have Asian energy, uh, which I love. But I think mushrooms are great. Baby spin, love. Some baby spin. Some baby spin. <laughs> you I... know what I love about baby spin? Tell me, please. Is we're going to put in some stock, and when it kind of gets warm, it just wilts like so softly, but not too aggressively. B big adult spin is like you still got to chew. Aggressive... Baby spin, you can just like, mmm. Aggressive shrinking is the salary you got paid in December <laughs> where you left right now. That was some aggressive shrinking. <laughs> that was aggressive oh. shrinking. Okay, wow. but yes, I know what you mean. And that's why I also like using baby spinach in sandwiches for when yes. it's for the office, for the lunch, because normal lettuce might wilt when baby spinach wilts. Like you said, it's not an aggressive wilt. And it kind of has a little bit of texture, which is great. Yes. Pack your lunchbox smartly. Also, people that pack their lunchboxes and then put the tomato directly, it's bread and then tomato and then everything else, don't, don't do My that. body just closed. Right? Because, I mean... <laughs> do you want a soggy bread? Yes, and the bread goes all soggy and tomato. No, no, no. It's sad. Someone's crying in the background. Create a layer. It's... If you're going to do that, a layer. First lettuce, then your tomato. Layer your sambos wisely. Ah, there's and a blueprint. Actually, even better. Put a spread first, some cream yes. cheese, something like that. There's oh a method. Gosh. There's a method. There okay, a so method. we've got some mushrooms, and essentially yeah. you can use whatever mushrooms you have, and if you listen to Maxine's advice, you should just go pick some. <laughs> you just go forage mushrooms. Just go some forage some mushrooms, but we're going to go with some shiitake. Do not do today. that. Shiitake are nice. I know that people often say that mushrooms just taste like mushrooms, taste like mushrooms. I don't think so. No. Shiitake's got a nice, like, very, more earthier than button, for instance, and a slightly woody flavour, and with those combinations of earthy and woody together makes it taste very meaty for me. Yes, and you know what I'm obsessed with? Actually, the exotic mushroom mix. Mm. So they've got some oyster mushrooms in there, and I feel like they have different textures as well. Some of them you can chew for days and they're kind of bouncy, and then some of them are a little bit more kind of smooth when you bite through them, and I love that. 100%. Okay, so you're slicing up the mushrooms. Normally, I tear mushrooms, but this is the one time okay. you do want to slice. I would actually love to see a demonstration so, of a tear. It's a bit difficult with... Not say difficult. It's a little trickier when you're doing it with um, shim shimiji mushrooms because they have kind of like a... How do I explain it? They have like a, a like skin. A, like, and, and it's got some resistance yes, to it. it but does. essentially what you're doing is all you want to do is you want to pierce it and then pull open. And what happens is versus slicing, and if you look at it, you can see the difference. The slice one is very smooth. Yes. Okay? Whereas the torn yeah. one has more texture to it. Yeah. And when you fry it, the torn mushroom actually picks up more texture and actually gets crispy just because you're tearing it. So I normally tear my mushrooms. But for this recipe, I like slicing them because you're not cooking those mushrooms. You're pouring yes. hot stock or water over it, then you slice. So, and I'll go get that water in a bit. So, but, I mean, look how cool that it is. That is actually... a hot tip for free, which I didn't know. And also, crispy mushrooms are so good. I mean, soggy and mushrooms. They can soak up the. Oh, so, yeah, oil one spices. thing that I've tested, it actually works really well. We're talking so much nonsense, and I love it. <laughs> the one new way that I fry my mushrooms. This is really important stuff. Yes, so, let me this just is. stop chopping. I boil my mushrooms first. Now, when I first heard about this, I was like, what? That sounds ridiculous. And I tried it once to test it. So all you do is you boil your mushrooms first until okay. they, they kind of plump up with that yeah. moisture. Then you fry it. What happens is they become extra meaty. You'll often find that mushrooms go a bit dry when you fry them, in yes. a good way, in a good way. But this way, when you actually boil them first, it becomes extra meaty. I love that, especially because we were speaking about some meat alternatives mm. for this year. And if you want that flavor, I think mushrooms are such a beautiful way to add a really meaty flavor to a traditionally meaty dish. I agree. So now, because you haven't seen him yet this year, Lucian Albertain, please can you come to the kitchen and bring my hot water? Some hot stuff, bringing some hot stuff <laughs> to the kitchen. <laughs> uh, are we not doing the, the round of applause every time Lucian comes into the Next. kitchen? Where's Next. the round of applause? 
There we go. They still, <laughs> the, 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 the rest of the team still sound like they're on December holidays. Thank you, Lucian. You came to work. You came to work. Thank you, Lucian. Okay, so mushrooms <laughs> have been sliced. We got a jar. Now, again, we do, you're doing a jar, but Woolies also have a beautiful, like, Tiffin-style lunchboxes, and Tiffin, Tiffin lunchboxes are back in fashion. Those are the Indian-inspired ones that have the multiple layers. I was going to say, um, excuse my, my ignorance in this moment. Please describe the it. Tiffin Tiffin, the Tiffin lunchbox. The Tiffin lunchbox. You'll usually see them being metal, stainless steel. I was never that cool to have that one. Do you know the lunchbox I had? Tell me. The annoying plastic ones with it never actually sticks down and it's this high, so you can't even fit an apple inside. Those are the one with the matching cooler bottle. Yes, it's just a tragedy <laughs> all around. So this sounds like really uh, a missing piece from my childhood. There we go, the Tiffin box. And also to the, to the inventor of that lunchbox that had the thing that fits the cooler bottle that you know is always going to leak. In 2024, we're going to find you. <laughs> and we're going to bring you to studio and we're going to have a conversation. Because those bottles used to leak like on cue, before you even start the day, before the balls even rang, that's already leaked down your bag, <laughs> down your pants. Tell the truth. Literally. And I mean, it's not like your lunchbox actually stayed closed no. either. So you had all kinds of juices all over your bag. Mania. In fact, the bottom of my bag was a permanent state of just darker brown. I had a brown bag and the whole bottom, but it was just permanently darker lunchboxes. brown. Lunchbox crimes. Oh my no. gosh. No, Tiffin box. Get a Tiffin box. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. Okay, let's actually start building yeah. this. So I'm going to start off with the noodles. The noodles we're using is the Woolies egg noodles that are already cooked. Okay. You could actually use like ramen two minute noodles, absolutely, but then again you can let it sit with that boiling water for a little longer. These are cooked already, which I love. So you're eating in like record time. And That's what I think is so great about this whole dish is it kind of looks so fancy, but you literally made nothing. <laughs> you, you just put another recipe where you're just clearing out your fridge. Literally. If you have roast chicken, add roast chicken to that. A gammon, mm. add it to it, absolutely. In the meantime, I'm gonna go in with some mushies. Those go in there. And I'm using some chicken stock just because we actually had chicken stock left over. But Woolly sells little sachets of bone broth. Yes, obsessed. It's magical. So you put a little sachet in there and then top that with boiling water. That's all the flavor and answer you need. But I'm adding some chicken. And the chicken I'm using, let me grab this knife over here. It's a big I'm one. using smoked chicken breast because it's already been cooked. And when you do pour the liquid over, it just picks up all that smoke, smoky chicken flavor. But well, that's what I was going to say. Did you pick smoky for a reason? I love smoked chicken breast, but is there a reason, you know, for this recipe that we did that? Purely because it's cooked and because you're going to get all that smoky flavor. And okay. if you're talking about ingredients that I want to use more in the new year, it's smoked chicken breast because they save so much time. Yes. The fact that it's already cooked, you can make amazing sandwiches, amazing pastas. You don't have to cook the chicken. It's endless, and I feel like we've overlooked smoked chicken a little bit. We've actually overlooked smoking in general. That's in something else we general. can bring into 2024. Yes. Just smoking things. It's such an extra flavor dimension, and it's actually not that difficult. It's not that difficult. I think we should do some home smoking in the new year, definitely. We're adding that to the list. Yes. I love smoking. I feel like as South Africans, I pretty much feel like my bones are still smoked from the festive season. <laughs> we bride all the time. And it's such a South African thing, so bringing that smoky flavors say. in is definitely... Vibe. Okay, that looks that looks beautiful. Okay, so if you can just crank up the heat on our stock, and again you can use stock or water. I'm just being fancy because we have stock in the kitchen. I'm gonna go with Willie's chili crisp. Okay, pause, pause, yes, pause. Yes, yes. Can okay. we talk about this, please? Yes, please. Because we are not just adding plain chili flakes. We are adding chili crisp. The chili, chili crisp. crunch. And I'm obsessed with chili crunches. I want to know, is there any extra flavor I mentioned that comes from this? Oh, absolutely. So you're getting a bit of garlic coming through. I think there's a little bit of soy sauce. There's a very savory note that you get from that. I think there's dried onions in there. Should we do and it? And the dried onion adds a lot of savory note to it. A little bit goes a long way, but I'm very generous with it because I like the heat. And Willie's also have the spicy, spicy one. This isn't the spicy one, so you can like, you can go with your soul. I, I this you is medium. It. I'm feeling like we need to do a taste test. Okay, let's do you it. say it's not, it's not too hot, but it's I don't know. It's not too hot. You're going to give me a little... I don't... There we go. Okay. And it's quite chunky as well, which I think is important. Texture. Mm. It's crunchy. Okay. It's spicy. <laughs> On the heat level, I'll say out of ten, it's a five. Okay. It's a five. It's not bad. Not bad at all. So. I love that. Because then you can actually add enough that you can really have the flavor coming through mm. and not just the burn. Absolutely. I find chili is such a beautiful flavor, but if we go too strong, you actually can't really appreciate it. Especially green chili for me has got that citrusy note. Mm. And I feel like people overlook the flavor and just think yes. it's only going to come through with heat. Not at all. So I like the flavor you get from, like you said. Oh. How's that stop looking? Um. Oh, wait, I've got boiling water over here. Okay. So, Boiling water, actually, I'm going to go 50-50. Okay. So this is a stock that we're using today. And like I said, Woolies does have that little bone broth sachet that's more convenient. I actually, we keep this, this in our office fridge for Taste Magazine. These are really great for like a 4 p.m. or 3 p.m. pick-me-up. A glass of chicken stock, 
It's weird. You literally just heat it up in the microwave or what? Yeah. So either this or I'll use the Willie's bone broth sachet okay. and use that and top that up with boiling water. Replacing that... <clears throat> Chili. <coughs> I was actually going to say after Ooh. the bone comes later, so it, it comes later. too soon. <laughs> that, that three o'clock slump in the office yes. when you normally go for a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, I feel like I'm putting South Africa on something. Have a cup of bone broth. Okay. Oh, my word. Pick up extra protein in there. You just feel, you feel good. You and I spoke earlier about protein and adding extra protein to your diet. That's good because it's got the good fats in it. It's got the proteins in there in a liquid form. Mm cup of that you're feeling great and we also spoke about how i mean we want to include healthy habits more water and i really feel like especially if we're giving up coffee or what we would normally reach for at that 4 p.m pick me up this is a really great solution so we're doing we're drinking water yeah, we're drinking we're water more protein yes. and we're drinking bone broth <laughs> and we're drinking bone Love broth it. okay so we're in we go with our boiling water yeah. And the magic's gonna happen pretty quickly. That spinach is gonna start wilting. The chili crisp, you can see already the uh, flakes are starting yes. to move to the bottom. Can I get some of that chicken yes, stock? Again, good. the chicken stock, extra. But we're gonna top it up with that just to bump up the flavor. And this is what you do, literally, as you're about to start your lunch. You top it up with, so good. with either boiling water from the kettle or your stock that you heat up in the microwave. You don't even really have to wait because the noodles are cooked already. So give it like a minute if you want. Um, the, you can eat it out the jar with chopsticks and then at the end you have a beautiful broth and you can just drink out the jar, drink out the jar. Or you can turn it out to a big bowl and enjoy it just like that. I love this recipe. It's and what, so good. What's really beautiful about it as well is it's quite filling and I love that there are veggies, there is protein, there's a nice carb sauce mm -hmm. as well. And then because you have the broth, it just actually fills you up that last little bit. So I think as a wholesome filling lunch, this really ticks all the boxes. I'm so happy you like it. And I've also found that if you have a cup of broth before any meal that you eat, you just feel better afterwards. Totally. Maybe because it fills you up quicker. I don't know. But I think I'm adding that to the, to the list as well of things we're going to try more. More broth. Well, broth is just a really good for your gut. So, so I think good. having that before a meal um, just really kind of adding settles the stomach. And, and that's why I got you here today, because you're quite an expert in using food, not just for fuel, but food to kind of like... Be well. Be well. Yeah. A great way of saying, so I'm really happy to have you here today to get your stamp of approval. These are good. Oh, there's an example, like our baby ones. I Why thought this is, this is sweet, not... but I was like, what, what, is you, what are you actually going to do It's with for Carl Wasty. Okay. So... <laughs> My it's friend Carl Wasty, this is for his size. Just joking, Carl, I love you so much. But I mean, for kids as well, I thought it'd be quite cute if you, you're busy making this the night before and you got the kids with you and that could be like, yo, you want to make your own little jar? Okay. Yes. So okay. quite cute. I love this recipe. I'm, I'm glad that you like it. I'm more of a big jar girl, though, I must just say. Yeah. Um, I like a big lunch, so this is really appealing. There we go. And I, I actually made that one for Raul Damone. He hasn't eaten yet. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure he would, he <laughs> would approve. <laughs> Are you coming to steal my life? Yeah. Oh okay. Listen, guys, I really am loving what's going on here. I couldn't help but come through because, firstly, nutrition boxes are being ticked here. Mm -hmm. Bone broth, which is something that is like a superfood at the moment. I want to find out, though, because I'm someone that really loves great meals like this and I love convenience. Can I sort of prepare this in advance and include it in sort of like a meal prep over the week? Or is it not going to last that long? Is there a way to kind of do that, maybe? I would say, to a certain degree, you can. I wouldn't put the noodles in because they're fresh noodles. Okay. So I think if you're prepping your veggies and you've just got all your containers of all your veggies chopped up, that's already a win. You're okay. saving like three quarters of the time by yeah. just doing that. And then you're literally using leftovers that you have from the week. So I wouldn't want you to go uh, and buy okay, a chicken. And then, and, but, 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 but with but that you, being said, I mean, I would want to because this is something that I think go. is worthy of. Like, if I could, and I know this sounds crazy, but if I could make like 10 of these for the week, yeah. and I know I have like one or two every day, pop it in the freezer maybe, and then like somehow defrost it, is that even possible? Well, no, because no. you want to no. keep, keep the veggies as fresh as possible. Okay. That's the thing. Okay. A lot of the appeal of this is the texture that you have in the veggies. If you're going to freeze it or you're going to keep it in the fridge for too long, you're going to lose the texture. All right. Yeah. But I've got something for you. Okay. But first, you're going to say, Mom. I was going to say, nice, I think yeah. we can basically have the bit, the ingredient. You can have a chicken in the fridge. You can have your veggies. Mm. And then the actual compilation of the jar the only takes a minute. Well, clearly, so you showed how easy that is. Yes. Yeah, so you can kind of prep it, I feel. Yeah. Okay. Chop the veggies. You have your noodles there. Everything's just fresh. I'd like to add it together. To be really honest, I actually just came in to try to spread it. Get out of here. I almost like, take this for myself and was hoping you, you wouldn't go. notice. Yeah. <laughs> oh it's, it's all good. We made it for him. And if you are, another tip for Raul de Mornay, if you want to Take this up a mountain, pop that in a flask, <laughs> and then the stock will the stock will stay piping hot in the flask for hours. Yes. Pour that over the jar. Raul the morning on a mountain, eating out of his little jar. I'm just having visions. Like this is so bougie. Here we are on top of a mountain. Oh no, sorry, I have my bone broth jar of smoked chicken and chili crunch. Oh, we're not from Cape Town. Like That's a, so Cape Town. Give me a salty crack. <laughs> <laughs> at the top of a mountain.
mountain. I love this it. This is amazing. If you see yourself up on a mountain with more snacks, you're not going to want to miss <laughs> our last segment. We're making something sweet, something mm. delicious, and something that Max will approve. Don't go anywhere. They will be back with more Culinary Hotline Bling! Hey, 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 hey. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to the show, and we're back in the kitchen for the last installment of the Culinary Hotline Bling! Take Ah, oh, perfect. Okay, now we're going to end off on a sweet treat, Maxine. This is like all the goodness. All the goodness in front of us, and we're making delicious seed and date bars. Yum, Again, yes. for lunch boxes. I love this, and also, I mean, a lot of these things I have in my pantry already, so I mm -hmm. think we could also get playful with all those random little bags of seeds and nuts that have been sitting there for too long. Chuck them in here. Before they start sprouting and <laughs> yes. growing things. Use it, absolutely. Where do you keep your seeds and your nuts at home? Uh, do you mean like way in my pantry? I yeah. keep them in jars. You so them in I jars. actually have quite a beautiful display of all the things, but honestly, some of them are really coming to their. Uh, they need to hit the bin very You need to make this. You need to make this. I don't often use, let's say, a whole lot of pumpkin seeds, but yeah. I do have a jar, so I really actually. <laughs> pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, <laughs> and sunflower seeds, I keep in the freezer. Oh, really? Yeah, I keep them in the freezer because I know they've got oils in them and that's what we love the most about it. So to stop the oils from going rancid, I just keep it in the freezer. I probably have sesame seeds in the freezer that I've had for like a year. But you're just full of hot tips for free because I feel like I need to do this. Do you just put them in like a bag? A little zip seal baggie. And then I actually do write what it is. Okay. Things tend to like look different when you freeze them. Yeah, they do. So I just write on there like sesame seeds, boom, in the freezer. Wow. And every time I need it, I'll just like take it out because I always toast my seeds before I use them. Okay. This time we're not going to toast the seeds because it's going to go to the oven, so it'll do a bit of toasting in the oven. But yeah, if you're going to keep them in the freezer at home, just toast them before you use it and it's good to go. Like literally I've had a massive bag. I bought for a kg bag of sesame seeds. <laughs> I'm good for a very long time. So that's, that's, my, that's my tip. That was a good tip. But the, essentially, like you're saying, use any nuts, any seeds, bang it into this mixture, and it really, really works. We're using dates, and okay. I love dates. So another item I want to use a lot more in the new year. They add sweetness to it, but almost like a, a caramelly depth of sweetness, and it also helps bind everything that we're going to be working with today. They do have that stickiness, and also what's so great about dates is that they actually don't spike your blood sugar as quickly as other they don't? Kind of sweet things. No, not as quickly. So tell us how you feel in a minute from Feeling now. amazing. Oh. I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, okay. it's more sustained energy release. So these are actually such a wholesome snack to make because obviously with the fats from the seeds, so much fiber, we have our sweet sauce, mm -hmm. not something that's actually too high GI. So this is a beautiful snack. Cool, let's put it together. So, mm. as you are adding everything to the bowl, will you yeah. kind of just like name them? <clears throat> All right. While so, you're doing that, I'm going to chop up some dates. Let's start with the coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Yum, love coconut oil. Okay, another thing to use a lot of this year, I'm loving coconut oil. And actually, can I just add, this has become my new favorite moisturizer. Oh, really? I just put it on my body. Oh, like, yes. And that's really cool. And then, like, is it the one that doesn't have a, like any coconut smell? I actually love the coconut smell. So you smell like to be fair, toasted coconut. I smell like a little tropical coconut most of the day. But that's the scent of summer, isn't it? It's like, toasted. Toasted coconut is officially the scent of summer in South Africa. I mean, not being funny, I actually find it goes on so smoothly. I feel light. Doesn't okay. Feel, doesn't feel too um, oily. It's amazing. I remember um, my wife used to do coconut hair mask, coconut oil hair masks. Yes. Yeah. So that's cool. Okay, coconut oil. Multi-purpose ingredients. And I, that's what I'm about to say now. I like ingredients that don't just have like one function. They do like a million things. Totally. And coconut oil's definitely that thing. Okay, cool. Can I ask quickly about this? Mm. So we're going to put the dates into the coconut oil. You're just going to chop them that size, then they should be smaller. I'm going to go a little smaller. Okay. I'm going to get the rough chop done first and then run the knife through one more time to get a little smaller. But you don't want to go too small. You still want texture and keeping things chunky is very important. Okay. Um, that way you know what you're eating, number one. But it just adds so much dimension to the texture and overall yes. dish. So definitely don't go too fine with that. But obviously we need to go fine enough just so that it can actually be a bit of a binding agent exactly. as well. So it's got this kind of dual purpose, which I love. There we go. Yes. Okay. In we go. Okay, in we go. Oopsie. And I'm gonna keep on chopping more. I think I'm gonna add some more to it while yes. you add the okay. remaining Thank ingredients. You. Okay, so next up I'm going to add just some of our seeds. Sesame seeds, love. Love. Love, love, love. Do you like halva? I love halva. It's one of my my favorite treats ever. I should add that to my indulgent list. I love yes. halva. So you use your kilogram of sesame seeds. <laughs> to make halva. To make oh, some halva. Absolutely. Pistachio halva. Yes. yes. With it. Right, that's in there. Then we got sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds. Going in. in and we, we go. got some pumpkin. Yeah, we go. You go. And, and again, we're not toasting it now. It's going to toast and do its thing in the oven. We got some oats yes. going in. Almond flour. 
And if you have almonds, just blitz it up yourself and make the almond flour. You don't have to go and buy almond flour. And I think also here, if you don't have almond flour, you can use obviously any nut flour and also some True. coconut flour, but obviously a little bit less yes. because coconut flour really sucks up moisture. Yes. So I think you'd probably need about half if you were using Absolutely. coconut flour. And then we've got some... Is this honey or maple? This smell? It looks like honey. Mmm, it's honey. Yeah. And I remember why I added honey instead of maple to this recipe. Quite a few earthy flavours going into this dish. Honey is acidic. Okay. Do you know we always squeeze lemon over food yes. to brighten the flavours? That's why I added honey to it. There's an acidity in here that brings out the flavours of everything that we're working with. Don't have to use all of it. I just threw in some... This is quinoa, hey? Quinoa, absolutely. Uncooked quinoa. Uncooked quinoa. This. When it goes into the oven, it actually it doesn't pop, but it softens around the outside, but it, and then it pops in your mouth. Wow, so, so a little bit of that like, kind of texture bite. We recreated the snap, crackle, pop. Okay. Also, I like about quinoa is it's actually a great protein source. Mm -hmm. We have been speaking about healthy and um, meat-free alternative forms of or sources of protein, and quinoa is great for that. It's the one that looks like it's spelt quinoa. Quinoa. It's not quinoa. It's quinoa, <laughs> and it's absolutely delicious, especially when you cook it um, properly. And I use it a lot as a substitute for for rice because just like yes. rice, a little bit goes a long way. So like. One cup of quinoa makes enough for days, so it's a great way to actually incorporate new grains and new pulses into your diet. You know what's beautiful about quinoa as well? It's gluten-free, so these bars... I didn't know that. Yes, if we use gluten-free oats there as well, these are completely gluten-free, so you just add that to the list of dietary Here requirements that this little snack is ticking. And I know that some people are iffy about honey being vegan. It's not. If you had to use maple syrup, again, it would be a vegan dish. I'm trying to double-check. Yeah, yes. it would be a vegan dish. Yeah. Absolutely, there we go. For our, our resident vegan, we'll work on a recipe for you. Okay, so let's pop <laughs> our one guy. Let's pop that into our baking tin. Okay. And it doesn't need to it doesn't need to come together or hold like a dough does. Okay. It, while it bakes, so that's when it's actually properly set. So you can pop that in. So we're not gonna add any salt, eh? Hey? <gasps> yes! <laughs> oh my goodness! We not need to salt the snack bar. Okay, look at my imaginary salt. Great. Okay. Great. Imaginary, imaginary salt. salt. Goes in. Can we add some imaginary cinnamon? Because I love cinnamon. Imaginary cinnamon in, in my pocket. Wait, I feel like I'm, you're a genie. What else have what you else got? I would like a little bit of uh, maybe like some chai spice, so like a little bit of nutmeg. Where are you pulling that out of? Yeah. There we go. And that's what I love about this recipe. You can completely make it your own. Love. Even if you put cocoa in there to make it oh, like chocolatey vibes, yes. add the cocoa to it. Whatever you want to do to add like extra flavor to it, get it in there. Did we add the coconut? Okay, so Amazing. another thing you should... <laughs> I will just put this back. It's there we go, more. coconut goes in. It's and actually like... essential. It's essential, it's essential. It's essential. essential. Coconut goes in, it's gonna help it bind as well. It goes into the oven, and what... here's the thing, when it comes out the oven, let it cool completely, completely, before you turn it out. So when it cools down, that's when it becomes firmer, yes. and you can start slicing it into bars. This is hot. Hot, so we're gonna wait for a bit for it to cool out. It turns out beautifully, it slices beautifully, it fits into your lunchbox. What we've done during the festive season is when everybody comes into to our home, there's a cloche. Okay. And we normally have a Pandora there or whatever, a little biscuit that we've baked. Oh. And we had these in there and quite, they go really quickly. I'm sure they do. And it's delicious, it's so cool, and it, it lasts such a long time. Well, I want to ask, if we don't press this in, could we not make like a muesli? Could you not maybe have this exact mixture over a kind of wider oven tray? Toss it up, and then it would even get crunchier, I think, when it cools. Granola! Yes! This, this business thing we started is going <laughs> to kick off in the new year. I absolutely love it. Okay, go to the oven, comes looking like that. Cool it down before you get into it. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Karen, Karen's here. Karen, do you want to come join us in the kitchen? Now, I know I can't take it out yet, so I'm going to do a naughty thing. I'm going to slice a piece. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Oh, this looks delicious. It hasn't set yet, Karen. But actually, unset cookies or unset bars are actually the best when they're still soft and warm. And, I am, I gonna, am I going to get in trouble if I give this to you? Not at all. Because if you're going to sing and then a psyche's in your throat and then they're going to say it to I've me. Got, I've got some backup. Okay, there. there we go. Let me get so your teaspoon. <laughs> Oh, I'm giving you a big spoon then. Big so food. to taste what it tastes like and the way that it actually, all those seeds toast, the flavours develop. Lovely. Let me take the other side. Mm. The good. eyes are doing mm. things. The eyes are doing things, yes. Very nice, huh? The Afrikaans and Mabel no come. Who feel Engels created? Graham does this thing. Uh, oh, my. Smart Mayor Engel it may. So we don't say that. <laughs> Eight faith. Who feel Engels here? Yay, me did this. Afrikaans 2024. Faith, faith, faith. Faith, faith, faith. Thank you, South Africa. Thank you, Karen. Thank Lovely. you so much. 
And thank you, Max. Thank you. Thank you. First hotline of the year. I think we did an amazing job. We Three did. amazing dishes. We're going to be seeing you a lot this year. You're going to be in the kitchen taking the stage. I can't wait to be your sous chef in the kitchen. It's going to <laughs> be happening. That's a dream come true. Happening. It's going to be happening. Let's make some magic. In South Africa, you've been absolutely amazing as well. Let us know in the Facebook comment what you want to see us do this year in the hotline. We want all your themes. We want your recipes. We want you to be involved. So let us know on Facebook, on X, on TikTok, wherever mm -hmm. you find us, let us know. It's been amazing. And it's been the first Culinary Hotline Bling of the Year! Yeah. Yeah.